last one we boarded was the happy hippo and believe me he is happy to be on the ark and the last scraggler is the zebra that makes sense because it's the last letter of the alphabet so I'm going to go ahead and pull out my color cover sheet I always like to do that first if nothing else it's colorful but I use it a lot of times for a placement guide uh, many times in the kits there are several pieces that are the same size same shape uh, but there's many different colors of it and the um, placement guide the color cover sheet really helps in letting you know which piece goes where sometimes it wouldn't make a big difference but sometimes it does I'm going to give my pattern a quick press with my dry iron just to get out those creases because I don't want those to translate into the final product. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull out my light box for one final time. So we're down to the zebra. We're at the end of the alphabet it appears. And uh, we're just going to take our time and get this last animal up in the ark. Uh, I always like to start with all of the items that are underneath, so I'll go ahead and do that again. And remember that all of these items are laser cut at the factory, so they're going to have a really nice crisp edge to them. And we almost feel like that burnishes the edge of the fabric and helps keep it from fraying. They're also pre-fused with a product called Steamaseam 2, which is a fusible web. On, so it's three layers basically. It's the fabric that you see, the fusible web is sandwiched in between, and then a paper backing. And what I'm doing here is just peeling off that paper backing, which is allowing me to place that uh, applique shape on the background fabric. And it's, uh, the fusible web is tacky enough that it will stay in place while I work. It's not permanent, it's just uh, like a sticky note almost. A post-it note. Keep in mind that sometimes when you build up multiple layers, you can't see um, where some of the top pieces go. So you can do these in like compound pieces just to give you a helping hand to see where the pieces go. Because even with the light box, this purple is hard to see through even with nothing underneath it. So I can go ahead and now put that aside and I might do the same with the eyes. No, I'm not going to do that because it eyes are on top of the snout. So I think I'll be fine with the other pieces. So I'm going to peel this off. I haven't set it for a couple videos, but in case your paper doesn't come off by bending the edge, you could score the paper with a sharp object like a pen or a seam ripper. And when you bend it, it just gives you something to peel up with. Oh, I'm going to do my ears. I love this little ear shape. Did you happen to know that zebras are also part of the horse and donkey family? They're also very fast. A donkey or a zebra can run over 65 miles an hour. Each zebra has unique stripes. They are almost as unique as fingerprints.
I always get excited about this stage because this is the last block and I'm already wondering what kind of pattern I'll quilt it with, what kind of inner and outer border I'll choose. I'm trying to imagine the binding all the way up to seeing it hanging here in the studio. I have so many that I've finished recently in videos. I had been doing the appliques and then putting them aside and I hadn't been getting them all quilted until recently. And I have about 10 of them that a friend of mine is helping me get All, all the uh, bindings and sleeves done for. I machine them on, but she does the hand whipping. In exchange, that doesn't go there. I just saw it from my color, color guide that that's wrong. Maybe it's this one. Uh, in exchange, I do quilting for her. So we think it's a pretty fair exchange. But anyway, she has 10 of these uh, samples for the studio. Which is quite a few. So when I get all of those back, I'm really going to have to uh, take everything down, I think, and redress the whole studio. When you're doing these around the edge, it's really the edge that's the most important piece that we're trying to match on the pattern. Because it's the edge that we would notice if it was off. Once the pattern's gone, no one's going to know if the point is off, but the edge being off, that's what people would notice. So I'm going to turn it, the light off and make sure that I have that right on the edge of all those pieces. And now that's done. That's the last of our fusing for this except for that one dragonfly wing that I cannot do until we get the blocks put together. So I'm going to go ahead and get the um, light box out of the way and get my Teflon pressing sheet in replace of it and I can get this fused. My zebra is almost finished. I'm going to go ahead and give him a nice little spritz. This water component is absolutely necessary to activate the fusible web in the steam seam too. Just think of concrete. Water is necessary to activate the concrete. It is also necessary to activate the steam seam too. Now that I have the moisture trapped in there between the two layers of the uh, Teflon pressing sheet, I just have to allow the heat of the iron time to travel through the Teflon pressing sheet and each layer of that applique. Did you know that a zebra can stand up on its own legs in as short as six minutes after it's born? After I get this fused from the top down, I always like to flip the block over and fuse it again from the back up. Now in these last couple blocks, there weren't that many compound pieces, but there were a few. Uh, but in some of the other kits, there are quite a few layers to these, and it's hard for that heat to travel through all of those different layers of the steam seam and fabric.
It's also hard for the steam to get through all the uh, those layers. So it's really nice to flip the block over and re-mist it and really allow that heat to penetrate all the way through. The Teflon pressing sheet also keeps your iron clean uh, so no fusible web gets on it. It keeps the background fabric clean so that nothing translates from your sole plate onto the background. It keeps your fabric from scorching and it keeps the edges of all your applique sharp and crisp in case you happen to rub up against one of the edges with the edge of your sole plate. And I happen to know that last one because I've done it. Scrunched, scrunched one of my shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and remist this again because I really want to make sure all of that's activated. And I can see the steam coming up. Can you see it? Rising, rising. And as long as I see that rising steam, I know that there's still moisture in there and I can go ahead and continue ironing. If we fuse this properly at this stage, we know that it is permanent. And if we iron it properly at this stage and it's permanent, we know that it's not going to come off in the wash, it's not gonna come off in the dryer, and it does not have to be top stitched. We also know if we fuse it properly at this stage, we're not gonna get gumming on the needle when we're sewing, either quilting or top stitching. I'm really not seeing any steam anymore. There you have it. The zebra is the last alpha, uh, Z is the last letter of the alphabet, and the zebra is the last animal to get up onto the ark. And so we're done with all of our applique for this quilt, except for the one dragonfly wing that I still have to put on. The next time you see me, what I'm going to be doing is putting the blocks together, either with or without sashing, and I'm still waiting to hear from you which you think I should do. Sashing yay or sashing nay. You're gonna to have to say it loud too. I need to hear it. So in the comments section, let me know. Um, thanks for spending all this time with me. It gets pretty lonely in here. The quilts are really beautiful. They're really happy, but it does get lonely. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, please take care of yourself and take care of each other.